Hello everyone, this is Chris Jamal at Exton Interactive and in this video we are going to focus on adding this, you know, the typical cookie consent. My The site uses cookies, you know, you're bound to follow our terms and policies if you use our site, so on and so forth. So we'll have it uh, as usual, we'll do a little bit of, uh, don't really need responsive in the sense that we just center it when it's on a big screen and then we get rid of the centering later on. So that works. Um, it'll show if there's no cookie on the system. We'll show this little animate in. So if I refresh, we'll see it animate in. If I hit the accept button, it will set a cookie here so that if I refresh, it'll no longer show that cookie consent until it, the cookie that we just set, until it expires. And uh, of course, uh, that's what we're going to take care of in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to install a package. In this case, it's a JS-Cookie from NPM. And while we're at it, we're gonna install the types uh, typing file for it. I've already installed it, so I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna close it. All right, so we want to start by creating the uh, markup for our consent, cookie consent area here. So I'm going to come down below the mobile navigation uh, menu that we created last time. And create a new div here, give it a class and an ID. And inside of that, we're going to create another div and consent-content. Instead of typing this stuff out, I'm just going to copy and paste so we'll just have a paragraph here saying, you know, we use cookies, so on and so forth, the usual stuff. And inside that, we're gonna also have, so inside the consent content area, we're going to have a button with text of accept and should have done an ID and consent dash accept. All right, so that is saved refresh and we have this crazy amount of ugly looking text going on over here so now it's time to do some styling on this so we're going to put this so we're inside the uh, main nav component scss file we're going to put this inside of the header down here at the bottom again just below the mobile menu styling and we had the uh, Consent as the class. All right, so let's do some styling here. First include, so I'm gonna use a mix in for the position. We're gonna say it's fixed. Top zero, right zero. We're not gonna mess with the bottom. Left, it's effectively doing the same thing that we did with the, uh, you know, setting the width of the mobile menu to be 100%. And uh, I guess while we're at it, let's do the Z index next. So I guess we should be able to see. So there's our content back there. Just to keep things in order with the article, background color. And we have that navigation background color specified. Perfect. Nope, actually, uh, I lied. What we wanted for this was dark gray. Perfect. Now we'll set the color to be white. See our text there. Do a little padding. And include padding. Just with our gutter, which is five pixels. Move it out from the side a little bit. We'll do the transform in a second. So inside of that consent, we had the consent dash content. Fix them. Let's do this at include margin, top and bottom, nothing. Auto, left and right. Put text align. 
I just prefer justify when you see much change that margin will help us actually let's just do it all so we'll say max width 1024 pixels happens to be our mobile uh, so if we make it bigger we'll see now that you know with the content is centered and with a has the max width there so that's good all right now let's deal with these anchors so the anchors are getting messed up because uh, you know they're included within the other navigation area so we'll say anchor display in line so that's good color we're going to lighten the we have a specified an action color lighten it by 20 percent there they are let's go ahead and say padding zero and text decoration underline better i know it's hard to see zooming well actually i guess it's not going to hurt us much now we don't have any breakpoints going on all right so we're good there let's get some hover th going on here so and hover what we'll do is just put it back to the action color let's go ahead and save that so now we can see it changing just a bit when you hover over it let's take care of our button there so we do button background color it's probably already the action color but um, width going to take up 100% and we're going to say color white. All right, so that's what it'll look like in our mobile view. And if we have extra space, we can see that, uh, you know, it's centered, little uh, area there, and our accept button. So it's all looking good. Styled the way that we want it. So now we have to deal with the interactions related to it and then we go into the main dash nav dot component dot ts file that we used for the um, animating the actual mobile menu and while we're at it before i forget we need to include we're going to want the uh, um, consent area there to start off screen so transform translate y and the usual minus 101 and it's off of the screen now. Our mobile now still works, so go into our TypeScript file. First thing that we need to do is to import here. So import from JS Cookie, and actually it's a default import. So cookies equals and should have paid attention to the way I'm supposed to import this particular one all right so now we have the cookies in there we're gonna come down here below the mobile nav and above our fake export there and we're going to say const cookie consent name cookie dot consent so dot cookie dot consent and we're going to say as a matter of fact let's open up some things here so now see if i can figure out there so i've already been messing with it so this is already cookies already present i just delete it all right This is our development tools and looking into the storage here and looking at the cookies. All right, so right now we don't have anything, no uh, cookie consent there. All right, so now we'll say, we'll do the same thing we did for the mobile navigation, let is consent open equals false. Uh, const consent equals 
document.get element by ID and it had an ID of consent. All right, so that's the thing we open and close. Now we want to know, so if, and we'll say type of cookies.get, and now we need to say the cookie consent name. So if that's undefined, so it's not defined, we'll say is consent open. We'll use our animate in function that we created last time. And we need to pass in the consent. So we save that and we see this thing, if we refresh, animates in like it's supposed to. All right. So now we need a way to prevent it from coming in. So document dot get element by ID consent dash accept add event listener click Let's take our event const animate it's the same thing as our animate up there except is consent open so if it's open animate out if it's closed animate in <laughs> I think that I just, well, I was thinking of was I just dealt with or did the exact same thing as I did up here. It's not actually strictly required, I guess, because there's no button to cause this thing to animate in. Animating in is controlled by whether or not the cookie is present, but we'll just, you know, it works. Leave it alone. Is consent open equals animate uh, consent. Save that now, hopefully. Yes, so if we refresh it, it comes in. If we hit the accept button, it animates out. So that's working correctly. Perfect. This is, that was bothering me, but whatever. All right, so the last thing that we need to do is to create the cookie. So now we can just use cookies dot set. And we need to give it the name, which is the cookie consent name. And uh, next thing, oh, the value. In this case, we'll just put a string of true. I don't really care what the value is. What we care about is whether or not the cookie is present, not what it holds. And then we can put some options on here. So expires, we can put an expires on here. You know, 30 days in this case, so it'll pop back up in 30 days. Path, so this relates to the root of the project. And let's do secure, true. As the time I'm writing this, there is another property on the uh, cookie, which the same site property here. I think that right now this thing complains same site, yeah, it's not in the typing yet. So what we'll do is just cheat a little bit and cast it as any. So now that should set, let's move it up here. Now that should set our cookie. So if I accept, we can see that uh, Firefox automatically updated the fact that the cookie was set now. So we have this set. And we can see that it expires on February 14, 2018. So apparently that's yep, 30 days from today. If we refresh, we can see it does not appear again. It would only appear if the cookie was missing. And so I think it's fairly important, this thing. You know, this is related to legislation. So... I want to be sure that this thing is noticed. And so I'm basically covering up the main navigation. So you can't even see the main navigation to use it unless you accept it. You know, you may choose to put it on the bottom. Most of the places put it on the bottom. We'll say accept and everything is now working correctly. 
So I think that that was the last major thing I was thinking of to work on this uh, main navigation. So unless I come up with anything that I'm I'm happy with or we need to redo, we're going to have to, I guess, move on to a, a new topic in the next video. But until then, I'll talk to you later. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you and I will talk to you in the next video.